Today we're talking about Season 2, Episode 4 of The Chosen, talking specifically about the Zealots and the Cohorte Urbane. What are they? Well, stick around. Welcome to the Smith Life, where we look at creativity through the lens of Christianity. And today we're going to be talking about Simon the Zealot. But before we get into that, a few things real quick. If you like this video, please give it a like. If you want to share it with your friends, that would be amazing as well. And if you want to see more videos like this, please subscribe and hit the bell icon so you can see all the videos that we make just like this. Simon is such an interesting character. We have our original Simon, right? But now we have Simon the Zealot from episode four. And this brings a lot of new things into the equation for us. Who are the Zealots? What are they all about? And why was Simon trying to assassinate someone? So let's talk about it. Let's jump into the first scene where we see Simon going through some sort of training exercise. So let's watch this. Because you don't know how to count. I asked for eight years, six. That is not acceptable. I'm sorry. Please, sir. And we have the same problem. I ask you for eight. No, no, you take this back and you bring me eight like I asked. No, eight. Fire! No, Lord, but God. You ruined one of my cards. It did get his attention, Rabbi. You're very resourceful, Simon. That's it for today, Zalats. Come on, Simon, let's eat. Murder training. Real subtle. I'll be seeing you real soon, Simon. So in this scene, we're introduced to Simon the Zealot. And how do we know it's him? Basically, we hear the words Simon and Zealot in the same sentence. <laughs> it's pretty clear kind of what's going on there. So we're meeting Simon here in the middle of some sort of training exercise. We see that there are obviously no Romans here. <laughs> we can tell that definitely by their skin tone and by the way that they're dressed. We do see that there are a couple of them dressed up in some sort of mock Roman uniforms. But you can tell pretty clearly by their skin tone and their facial features that they are not Roman. Simon has set up this elaborate plan in order to basically execute this magistrate. There's basically gonna be a distraction from a burning cart and then that will allow him to get access to the magistrate to be able to slit his throat. And at the end of the scene, we also see a man lying in the grass, kind of spying on the zealots. This is an interesting thing that we'll get to in a bit. So let's talk about the zealots for a second. The Zealots are basically a political group that their main goal is to get rid of any occupation within the Jewish society. So Josephus, who is a Jewish historian back in Jesus's day, basically wrote about it this way, that there are three sects of Jewish hierarchy. One is the Pharisees, who we've seen a lot of in this show, the Sadducees, who we have yet to see other than Nicodemus, and then finally the Essenes. Now Josephus kind of adds a fourth sect to that and he calls them the Zealots. Now I'm sure not everybody of that day would include them as like a fourth sect, but they were a large group that eventually started many different conflicts, including a leading role in the first Jewish Roman war. Now the group known as the Zealots had varying levels of aggressiveness. There were some that were just protesting the occupation and didn't believe that Romans should be in their society, but a lot of the Zealots went as far as taking violence into their own hands. Now some of these were called the Sicarii, which is Latin for violent men or dagger men. And Simon may have just been one of these. We have no idea. But in this portrayal of Simon the Zealot, it does seem as if he's leaning more towards the violent side of things. There's no way to know for sure, but I'm sure that we'll find out more in the next few episodes. In this scene, we even see as Simon grabs the guy by the throat and says, No Lord, but God. Kind of reiterating what the Zealots were all about. Their whole plan is to overthrow the Romans, get them out of their cities, and to finally be free of this occupation. Because they truly believe that the only one that should be ruling them in any capacity is God. So after this scene, Simon's prowess is recognized and the leaders of the Zealots are trying to make this plan in order to make the Jewish leaders look bad. Those like Caiaphas, who we know from scripture is one of the high priests. They come up with a plan to kill the magistrate of Jerusalem, 
whose name is Rufus. And of course, Simon, having all of his training, takes the mission and begins his journey to Jerusalem. So let's pick up there and start the scene. That guy is here. I saw him earlier. Who is that? That is a ghost of the cohort A Urbane. Secret police? They're more like marshals. Elite soldier investigators. I heard the captain call him Atticus. Don't stare. Never seen one before. Or you have, and you didn't know. Hello? What brings you to Jerusalem? Uh, the, the festival, the pilgrimage. You're a few days early. I have family here. In what district? Near the Antonia Fortress. Are you carrying weapons? No. You're free to go. No! No! What was his crime? Murder? What is your name, soldier? Linus Silnius, sir. Linus, I want you to take your next assignment very seriously. My next assignment, sir? The Antonia Fortress is not a residential area. It is a public forum. That man does not have family there. Do you understand? Axius, send Linus Silnius home and take over this checkpoint. So in this scene, we get a lot of exposition. We see a Simon is making his way to Jerusalem. But also, we see many crucifixions going on at the same time. This is a very common occurrence during the Roman Empire. The scene quickly pans to two guards, and they begin to talk about Atticus, this man who we saw earlier in the episode, who we find out is part of the Cohorte Urbane. Now, this is a form of secret police type group that the Romans had. They took care of special assignments all through the Roman Empire and were pretty high up on the food chain. They got paid pretty well too. Atticus immediately recognizes one of the mistakes that Simon makes going into the city, immediately seeing that he told the guard that he had family in an area where there's no residential housing. And so Atticus now knows Simon is definitely up to no good. So the Cohorte Urbane mainly focused on being a force of non-disturbance, if that makes sense. They were there to police the area and make sure that everything went smoothly for political factions, for different things throughout the Roman Empire. Now, while other groups policed the streets or fought fires, this group was more of a heavy duty police force to do things like crowd control for riots or to stop things like we see in this episode, like an assassination. So we see Atticus here as he's doing his job to the best of his ability. And we're gonna see some more interaction with him and some other Romans. So let's get into that. Could you look any more Roman? I'd have asked you to meet me in the town square if I'd known you'd show up looking like a senator. I don't get paid to blend in. I'm Petronius, and you are the cohort Urbany? Atticus Aemilius. Your reputation precedes you. That is why I meet in alleys. You're a long way from home. Well, I go where the work is. And what work is here for you, Atticus? Your magistrate. Surprise. Something on Rufus's calendar puts you on a narrow road in the upper city just off the square. Valerian, it's uh, a restaurant. Rufus eats there every Saturday after Sabbath. Oh, lovely. But you've got a skilled assassin that wants to cancel his reservation. Did no one ever teach you to mix up the routine? He's inflexible about it. Good. That's good, that's good. Don't deviate. Do everything exactly as you'd planned. What? 
No, I can't risk his life. Go arrest the assassin. Do you know who the zealots are? They're extremists. They reject the They're opinion. martyrs with a persecution complex. Arrest him, we'll only be adding fuel. Torture him, he gets a seat closer to his god. No. I want to kill him, Petronius, in the act. And then I want to watch his rat pals scurry their way back to their nest with a story they can't glorify, can't teach to the next class of marks. And do you know why? Why? Because we were just better than they were. That's why. Rome won. <laughs> you should be a general. Now, what fun would that be? Well, you're going to have to lay out your plan to the magistrate and his wife. She'll go for it before he does. Tendinari says she doesn't. I don't need the money. So we see a few things in this scene as well. We see as Atticus meets with another Roman official, someone who is basically an advisor to the magistrate of this area, Rufus, who we were told about earlier. Now, Rufus is in danger, and Atticus knows that. So he's trying to warn him, trying to figure out what exactly is their plan? And so he finds that the magistrate eats at the same restaurant at the same time every week. Not a good thing to do if an assassin is after you. Atticus thinks quickly and begins to come up with a plan of how to counterattack this assassination. He tells the assistant, go ahead and just do what you're gonna do and well, I'll intervene. Atticus isn't okay with just arresting or torturing the zealot. It needs to be worse than that. It needs to be something where it shows that Rome is in control and that there is nothing that you can do about it. Remember, his job is not to just stop this assassination, but it's to stop things like this from happening in the future as well. So if he can just stop the assassination and kill the assassin in the act, it might persuade the others to stop and not do this again, not to attempt it again. So we have these two really interesting groups in front of us. We have the zealots who on one hand are trying to purge Rome out of all the Jewish cities and make it so that God is in control of everything once again in their minds. But then we're also introduced to the cohorte urbane on this side who want to counteract that violence and make it so that the zealots can no longer do any harm to Rome. Atticus is a really cool character to me. He's obviously very intelligent and smart in the way that he does things, but he's also extremely ruthless. He wants to shut down the zealots with no mercy and no second chance. And we see a Simon is almost operating in this sunk cost fallacy. I've been doing this for so long. I've been a zealot for so long. This is who I am. I have to keep on going into this mission. I have to complete this goal. I have to get rid of the Romans. This is who I am. And even when he has his brother begging him not to, and even when he knows internally, this is probably wrong. He still goes forth and he's completing this mission. So in the last scene of this episode, we do see as Simon tries to complete this mission, he executes his plan. And right as he's about to go and try to execute the magistrate who Atticus has taken the place of and Atticus is ready to counterattack as well. He sees his brother walking along the way and it stops the whole thing. Atticus no longer gets to attack Simon. Simon no longer gets to try to kill the magistrate and everything just kind of stops because of what Jesus did earlier. If you want to see that episode, I'll link it right here where you can see as we talk about the pool of Bethesda and the man that was healed there by Jesus. Dallas and the team did a really great job of incorporating both of these groups. And I hope that we get to see more of Atticus and the Zealots as well. It would be really interesting to see them kind of come into the story here and there. So let me know what you think. What do you guys like about Atticus or the Zealots or the fact that Simon is going to have to deal with all of this now? Even the fact that he can't go back to the Zealots. They told him if you didn't complete this mission, you wouldn't be allowed back. Let us know in the comments below. We love reading your comments and replying to them whenever we can. Other than that, if you guys are watching this before episode five goes live, we're going to be watching it this Sunday live with you guys. So if you want to come to our live stream and watch with us, that would be amazing. At the end of the episode, we'll be chatting and just talking through everything that we've seen in episode five and in season two in general. So if you have any questions or want to talk to us live, please see us on Sunday night right after the episode is over. I hope you like this video and we'll see you on the next one. Thanks for being part of our community. Peace.